Our first scripture reading is from the Revelation of John. It's about a new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. From John. The story of Lazarus, which we might be familiar with, I share with you. And the verses are uh, John 11, 32 to 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would, have, would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead Four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. May God add blessing to this word of scripture. a story to tell you. It's about a few years ago when I was um, driving on Indiana Highway 421 from Rensselaer going north and I was away. It was a gorgeous spring day, two-lane highway, you know 421, yeah. Driving and it's beautiful and you know it's that spring day when the green is just starting to come out 
The fields are beginning to blush. The, 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 the trees have this green, wonderful new life in it. The sun is shining. It had been days of rain before that. We know a little bit about rain lately, don't we? Yeah. Was it nice this morning when you got up and saw? <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. So I, I'm driving along, and I, um, and I um, am just in awe. I am just filled with joy at the spring day, and I'm listening to NPR. They had a really good talk show on there, and there was this talk, and I was learning so much, and I'm driving along, and I'm just enjoying, and I'm driving, and suddenly I realized that there's a car who is passing me, but it didn't pass me. It just sort of stayed right beside me on this two-lane highway. And I'm going, what? What's going on, you know? So I finally look over. It's a state trooper. And the state trooper is going, <laughs> oh! <laughs> and I look down, I'm going 80 miles an hour. And so I slow down, and I pull over off the side of the road, and the state trooper pulls behind me. I mean, I'm getting the adrenaline rush of terror. Have you ever had this? Maybe, I hope you've never had a state trooper top of you, know. And if you, I don't know, yeah, anyway. So, I'm sitting there, and I'm getting out my papers ready to hand to him, you know, my driver's license, registration, la, 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 and I open the window, and he leans over, and he said to me, do you know that I have been following you for a mile with my lights on? <laughs> and I went, oh, no, I'm really sorry. And he said, I am so disappointed that you paid no attention to me. <laughs> well, I'm really sorry. I, oh, my gosh, you know, and I... And so um, he took my registration and my license, and then um, I'm waiting there, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, I, I'm getting a ticket. You know, what else? Yeah, I'm busted. <laughs> you know? So I'm sitting there trying to breathe, trying to do a breath prayer, you know, and um, he comes back, and he leans in my window again, and he hands me the paper, and I look down. It's a warning. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's a warning. And I said, oh my goodness, I, you know, I'm amazed. And he said, well, just don't go speeding again like this. And I don't tell you one last thing. I am so disappointed that you paid no attention to me. <laughs> then he get a little half grin and he walked back to his squad car. And I very slowly got back onto the highway, very slowly <laughs> driving, very aware. And I'm driving along, and I, a thought comes to me, just sort of one of those God moments. And it said, this is how you are with God a lot of the times. You pay no attention to me, God said. You just pay no attention to me. I went, oh, that stayed with me. It keeps waking me up. Paying attention to God. John had this amazing revelation. He had this amazing revelation of, of God. Paid attention to God and God saying the most wonderfully comforting things to the saints who had been suffering so much persecution by the Roman Empire. He got this vision for the future. For the saints who have endured so much for their faith. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Ah. And then comes the challenging words that we are being asked to pay attention to even today. See, I am making all things new. The verb is not in the past tense. See, I made everything new. It's not in the future. I will make all things new. But spoken by God in the present tense, now, right now, where, where we are living in this world, it is all in process right now. See, I am making all things new. Really, God? I hope so, because this is a pretty broken, 
broken old world that needs a lot of help? Or am I just not paying enough attention, not noticing how you are already making all things new? Today's All Saints Day. Hallows, All Hallows Eve, we know the story, right? And this is the day when we think about the saints. Um, saint literally means, the saint means one who is set apart for a holy purpose. Originally, the saints were every member of the Christian, early, first early Christian churches. Every one of them was called a saint. Paul, in his letters that he wrote in the Bible, and you'll see it, it says, it starts out, to the church of God that is Corinth, called to be saints. To the saints who are in Ephesus. To the saints in Colossae. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints. Saints were those who took seriously God's invitation to become new. To be set apart from the way of the world. In order to be God's light and love and God's healing presence for all of this broken world, even if their lives weren't comfortable. Not just be God's light and love later when they get to heaven. They were those who said yes to being a part of helping God make all things new here and now, no matter how difficult. One of the Roman Empire's emperors during the active persecution of those Christians was asked why so many keep becoming Christians and it's reported that he replied because they love each other <laughs> that's what saints do they make all things new they're not controlled by the fear, the despair, the exhaustion, the stress. Okay, forward 2,000 years. Now, we are all called, all of us called to be God's saints today. Even today, it seems we are invited to accept God's challenge in the revelation of John. To be set apart for a special mission to help God heal God's beautiful but broken world. Yes, God, we do want to be a part of you making all things new. We want to be your saints today. So go ahead, make us new. Help us to say yes for you doing this to all creation. Make us new. Now, no, wait a minute, I'm not saying that this is easy for us as individuals or as a world to say, okay, go ahead, God. Make us new, because you know what it involves? It's the C word, change. It means we have to change. I don't know about you. I'm, I, change is not my favorite thing to do. Like, I'm just, I'm on, on track. Anybody here really change easy? <laughs> no hands up, I don't know. Change is not easy. Change isn't easy. It means we have to leave behind our old ways of living and thinking and being. To be made new. We have to change. It's not easy. Ask Lazarus. In today's gospel reading, we heard about Jesus standing before Lazarus' open tomb and calling to him, Lazarus, come out. Well, can't you just imagine all the people? I mean, they, Jesus has already been told, if you take that stone away, he's already starting to stink. He's been dead four days, you know? It hasn't been easy. Clearly, People were a little amazed. And, you know, I had this image. I was, if I, I was trying to put myself back there. I had this sense of maybe the people were just staring at that empty tomb, waiting and waiting and going, oh, my gosh, this is a little weird. I don't know. And you know what? Does Lazarus explode out like Mighty Mouse? <laughs> no. Bursting his grave claws? No. They wait. I can just almost imagine them waiting. The silence is palpable. And it occurred to me, I wonder what Lazarus was thinking while he was in there, getting called out by Jesus. 
Has that occurred to you? It never occurred to me before. It's sort of like a, yeah. All wrapped up in his grave clothes, is it possible he could have thought, are you kidding, Jesus? I'm comfortable being dead. I'm not sick anymore. I'm not in pain anymore. I don't have to deal with mean people anymore. And you want me to come out? Jesus, this is asking a lot to come out and have to face this difficult world again. Give me a break. But is it possible? Is it possible that Lazarus then remembered how much he loved Jesus? How much he trusted Jesus? And he finally, as you well know, he finally said yes. Yes to Jesus' invitation to being made new. Yes to leaving behind the safety of his tomb. Yes to leaving behind the old ways of thinking and being and living, controlled by fear, despair, all those things. Lazarus came out. Yes, he was still wrapped somehow in his grave claws, but he came out. His soul wanted to be part of Jesus' invitation help God make all things new. This is the invitation for every single one of us. We are each being called, even today, called by the voice of God who keeps saying, see, I am making all things new. And it needs to start in every single one of us, even if we're a little scared about it. I hope, unlike me, who was so distracted by so many various things that I didn't pay attention to who was by me with flashing lights, that state trooper, may we each ask, are we paying attention to God? To God calling to us? Do we have the courage of Lazarus to listen, to come out of our safe hiding places and say, okay, yes, I want to be a part of what you're doing, God. Start with me. Even though it's hard to change, make me new too. So on this All Saints Day, I'm going to ask you something. Who is someone who has inspired you with their faith, with their life, with their action? Can you? I'm going to ask you to actually, and I won't make you say it out loud. It's okay. But really, take me seriously. Think, I want you just to close your eyes. Can you do that right now? Don't go to sleep. If you snore, I'll notice. Okay, close your eyes. Think of someone who has seemed to say yes to God's invitation. In this difficult, painful world, who do you know who has responded to God's challenge, somehow being part of God's light and healing that you have felt in your life? One person. This person doesn't have to be perfect. It's not what a saint is. Who has touched you, tried to bring God's love and light and healing into this dark world, has inspired you? They may be alive, they may have passed. Think of that one person. Quietly say thank you. Quietly say thank you for being one of God's saints. Open your eyes, and maybe after worship, you can share this with other people. Who was it? You might walk up to each other and say, who was your person? You know, just get nosy, you know, because it's okay. Yeah. I have so many I have got. I don't, I've got a pretty long list. I bet you all do. It's hard to choose sometimes. When my daughter, my, my first child, was about three years old, I was at, I was, um, I had, answer the phone, and I'd had a very difficult conversation with another family member. And I, I didn't know she was standing there watching me. And I hung up, and I had tears rolling down my face. And my little girl comes over to me. She crawls up into my lap. She puts her arms around me, and she pats me on the back and says, it's okay, Mommy. I love you. And then she named everybody in the whole world that we knew. And Lala loves you, and Lada loves you, and, and you know, every single person. And then she stopped and said, she didn't stop, and she said, and God loves you. 
you know what? That's one of those moments. Yep. Doesn't have to be huge. Although I'm going to share a few huge ones with you. Time Magazine, on November 19th, uh, October 19th, um, there's a story about, you know how we've been hearing about there's six million people who are refugees doing an exodus out of the Middle East and, and Africa into Europe. You've heard about this. Obviously, horrible things. That, that little three-year-old dead boy on the beach, it was horrible. You know, that picture that we saw, because they're trying to, oh my gosh. But the people, Time Magazine and New York, um, Sun, uh, the New York Times, have, they've tried to make it personal, not just mass, faceless herds. Here's a story. Marya Sharif's husband was killed by the Taliban three years ago. When her son, Rohan, 16, began to receive threats, Marya decided to sell their house and flee. They were from Afghanistan. We were sick with fear, says Marya. I just wanted my children to go to school in peace. When they arrived in Berlin on August 28th, the registration center was shut down for the weekend. That night, a Berliner, Kathy Tenstedt Horn, a teacher, and her husband, Tim Florian Horn, director of the Berlin Planetarium, heard on the news that refugees were camping on the street. Though the couple has a newborn and two small children, Kathy drove to the center and returned with all seven members of the Sharif family. They stayed until they found a shelter five days later. Says Tim, they had been through so much, but were still so united as a family. Got a little glimpse? I am making all things new, no matter what. Then there's Abdel Qadir Jabil, Jabili from Aleppo, Syria. 16-year-old, arrived in Berlin mid-August after three months of travel. I didn't want my family to face that dangerous journey, he says, of his decision to leave without his parents and younger siblings. Instead, he traveled with his uncle. Jabil is now staying in the former city hall of the district of Wilmersdorf in Berlin, which has been converted into a refugee center. I just called my father and found out today his shop was bombed. They are not safe in Aleppo, he says. But three days ago, I got my papers to stay. Because I'm a minor, I can now apply to bring my family here. I hope we can all stay in Germany because the people here are good. This woman, cover of Sojourners, Soad Nofal, a Muslim school teacher who staged get this, a daily vigil outside ISIS headquarters in Raqqa, Syria, is part of a surprising movement of nonviolent resistance against ISIS brutality. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're each part of this. We're all part of these being saints of God's love and light in this world, making all things new. And you don't have to be famous and hit the headlines because where you are, your light counts. Carolyn May says, we all can't be huge lights in this world and be famous, but your light, your light is like a little GE light bulb in your neighborhood, where you work, where you go to school, where you shop, at the store and the or on the computer or texting or tweeting or whatever it is you do, letting God move through you to help God make all things new. Despite the wounds and pain and exhaustion and stress that seems to be the way of life of this world, the darkness that you talked about, Julie, <laughs> yeah, where in your life can you say, you know what? I remember I did this, and it's right. Claim it. Claim that light that's happening in you. Because you've been freed by Christ's love to be as spunky and trusting as Lazarus. Able to say yes, even if the rest of the world doesn't get it. Able to say yes to being alive and full of God's light and love, helping God to make all things new. Change is a process. Oh, okay, there's always little parts of us that are going... Oh, do I really want to do this? 
And, but God never gives up. God keeps calling each of us every day. And I think God has got this huge grin on his face, maybe Jesus did too in front of the tomb, saying to each of us, see, I am making all things new. How does it feel? Don't give up. On this All Saints Day, you, you are, you are part of it. There are the saints in glory who have passed on and we can think of those with such thanks. And there are the saints here and now and there are you and many others, surprising ones too. We are not alone, God moving through us. God is with us. We are not alone. This church has got each other. You help each other. You're part of that. That's what saints do. That's what the church does. We're not perfect. That's what it means. You're saying, yes, look at you. You could have slept in this morning, huh? <laughs> I didn't hear an amen. Okay. <laughs> There's also the saints in glory who surround us. And I have a sense also of the invisible presence of more than we really realize. They're praying for us, saints and angels and Christ himself. God is with us, loving us, changing us daily, so that more and more we may become who Jesus always knows, has always known we are. Light in this world. I believe, I believe that God is doing it right now, and you're part of it. Don't give up. God doesn't. Nor do we, communion of saints. Ah, we sang, no, I think Chris just sang it by himself. Sing a new song now. Amen. <laughs>